right, folks, buckle up because we're diving deep today into this wild concept of, well, abandonment. Mm, abandonment. Yeah, and I know, I know, it sounds a little scary at first, right? Like, we're not talking about getting left behind at a gas station road trip kind of abandonment. Right, right. This is about abandonment as like a good thing. Okay. Like a way to actually strengthen your bond, your connection with, well, the divine, you know? Yeah, I think I see where you're going with this. And we're going to be using these excerpts from Pasted Text. It's super interesting how they frame it within Christianity. Oh, interesting. So if you've ever thought about faith or how to grow spiritually or even just like how what you do lines up with what you believe, mm. this one's for you. I like that. And you know, it's really interesting about how Pasted Text talks about this. It's like they took this word abandonment, something we usually think of as bad, you know, like giving up. Yeah. And they totally flipped it on its head. Yeah. It's about surrendering, but surrendering to something way bigger than us. Surrendering to God's will. Okay, I get how that's a plot twist for abandonment, but I don't know, surrender. Doesn't that sound a little passive? Not quite. Not how this text talks about it. It's more about this like deep trust. Mm. Imagine being so in tune with with a higher power mm. that you just, you trust the plan, even if you don't get the whole picture right now. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm starting to see it. So then they connect abandonment to, get this, faith, hope, and charity. It's like the holy trinity of virtues right there. Exactly. And they don't see them as separate things either. It's like they're all... Interwoven. Yeah. yeah. All braided together within this idea of abandonment. It's like you can't have one without the others. Okay. So break that down for me. When we're talking about surrendering to God's will, what does that actually look like with each of those? So first, you got to have that deep trust in God, that he exists, that he's good. That's faith. And then there's hope, which is holding on to this belief that God's promises, they're going to be fulfilled no matter how hard things get. Okay. And finally, you've got love for God. But it's got to be so powerful that it spills into your actions, into how you treat others. That's charity. Oh. Love in action. Oh, wow. Powerful stuff. But then they lose me a bit because they start talking about both pure love and pure faith. And I'm like, wait, how are those different if they're both part of this abandonment thing? Uh, yeah, it gets kind of deep there. Pure love, the way they describe it is like being bathed in the light of God, pure joy, pure confidence. Okay. But then there's pure faith. That's about like holding on to your faith even when everything's dark, when you're full of doubt, like walking through a spiritual desert and not giving up. So you're saying it's not about like always feeling good and happy versus pushing through when it's hard. Exactly. Both are totally valid ways of surrendering to God's plan. It's just that, well, we all connect with the divine differently, right? Like there's tons of trails up the same mountain. Right, right. And this idea that it's not just for like monks on a mountaintop, right? Right, exactly. Like for anyone. This text is very clear on that. You don't need to be a scholar or have some crazy mystical experience. Yeah. It's about that desire to connect with God, to align what you want with what he wants, wherever you're at on your journey. I like that. Like no fancy equipment required, just show up. Yeah, just that open <laughs> heart, that willingness. I love that, especially these days, you know? It's like, do more, be more. And this is like, nah, just let go. But what does that even look like, you know? Are we just supposed to like become passive, let life just happen to us? That's actually a big part of what the text digs into. And it's not about being passive or ignoring your responsibilities. It's about realizing we're part of something so much bigger mm -hmm. and then surrendering to that. Even when we're like, wait, what's going on? So less about being swept away by the current, more like surrendering our own little map, right? Mm. Saying, okay, there's a bigger plan here. You got it. Think of it like planning a road trip, right? You've got your route, your stops, everything, but then boom, detours, unexpected turns. Abandonment is trusting those detours are still part of the journey, guided by, well, something beyond our control. Okay, I can see that. But then they hit us with this phrase they call abandonment, a pledge of predestination, and whoa, I'm lost. Predestination, what's that even mean here? Yeah, that's where the text gets seriously deep. The simplest way to put it is predestination is this idea that God has a plan for us, like a path that's already laid out. So if there's already a plan, do our choices even matter? Are we just along for the ride? That is the question, right? Yeah. People have been going back and forth on that for ages. And this text doesn't say, here's the answer. But think of it like this. Imagine this incredible tapestry, right? Okay. Each thread has its place, even if we can't see the whole picture while it's being made. Our choices are like those threads. They all add to the tapestry of our lives, guided by 
Will the master weaver? Whoa, that's that's kind of beautiful. So it's less like fate, more like a dance, maybe. Yes, not puppets, but surrendering to the rhythm of this divine dance, trusting that even if we can't see the steps, we're being led. So there's room in that dance for like the pure love moments, the joy, but also the times we're leaning on pure faith to get through the rough stuff. Absolutely. The text is really clear. There's no one right way to experience this whole abandonment path. It's different for everyone. I like that. What really matters is that genuine desire to connect with God, to line yourself up with his purpose, no matter how you're feeling in the moment. So it's not like forcing ourselves to be happy all the time or never have doubts. It's about like bringing our whole selves, messy and all. Yeah, exactly. Letting go of thinking we're the ones with all the answers, <laughs> opening up to the possibility that there's this wisdom way beyond what we can even grasp. And by doing that, by really leaning into this abandonment, is that how we open ourselves up to receive whatever it is we need, like our own strengths or virtues even? You got it. It's like saying, look, I'm letting go of needing to control everything. I'm ready for whatever you, this higher power, have planned. Yeah. And that's when the cool stuff happens. That's when those unique gifts, those talents, they start to bloom. It's like we're trading in control for like this flood of guidance and grace. And this isn't just a Christian thing either. This idea of surrendering, yeah. letting go of the ego, it's all over the place in spiritual traditions. Really? Yeah, it's like a universal key to unlock that deeper connection with with the divine. So big picture, what's the one thing you hope folks listening take away from all this? I'd say let go of needing to be perfect in your faith, in your spiritual life, all of it. Just show up, surrender to something bigger and trust that in that surrender, you'll find peace and the exact guidance you need to really live your purpose. Yeah. Trading in control for trust. Trust in a power bigger than us, trust in how our own journeys are unfolding, and trusting that even when it's tough, we're not alone. Beautiful stuff. So, as you go about your day, think about this. What could change if you embrace letting go? What becomes possible when you surrender to something bigger? Thanks for diving deep with us. 